Hey guys, welcome back. And today I found it. My beautiful Tupendactylus. I have been trying. I cannot explain to you how much, uh, how hard it took to find this. It was way harder than it should have been. So basically, the first time I saw this wave of uh, danger pack figures, um, I like. I saw it, but at the time, I couldn't get it, and, like, okay, next time, I'm gonna get it, okay? I'm gonna get it, okay? Next time, oh, okay, well, let me just tell you, there was two Pianetsisauruses, two Zoanosauruses, and one Tupendactylus, so, in total, there was, like, five figures there, and all from this line, and I really just really wanted the Tupendactylus. There's Something, like, every once in a while, there's just a figure that they have in a line that, like, I've just really drawn to. Kind of like that Kronosaurus a while ago. I still love that figure. But this one, I I'm just drawn to it somehow. Like, it's not, like, really flashy colors or anything. It's not, like, the sculpt isn't really nice. It's just, I can't, I don't know what it is about it, but I just, I really like it. But yeah, so basically, I've been going to Walmarts like crazy trying to find one of these. And finally today, I went to one Walmart, and it was promising they had one... Actually, no, they had two Zoanosauruses and one Pianetskisaurus, and that's it. They also had the uh, Epic Damage Velociraptor and Dilophosaurus, which I was tempted to get, but didn't. Because, I don't know, there's something weird about them. They're just really... They're... they're they're very round, like, because they have the electronics in them, and it just makes them, and their tails are so tiny, and it, I don't know, their proportions are off way, way too much, and, but I do kind of like them. So then we went to the other Target, uh, Target, the other Walmart in the same city, and I found two Zoanosauruses, a Pianetskisaurus, and finally in the back, I found this beauty, the Tupendactylus, and I love this figure so much, and I cannot wait to get it out. I, like, I've spent probably about two weeks trying to track one of these down. I couldn't find one in online or anything. Like, um, I was about to just go to Best Buy and try to find one, because that's the only place that I found that I knew for sure they had this line, but it wouldn't tell me if they had this one exactly. Um... Same like the, the Ostroraptor. I could never find one of those. I had to go to Best Buy. So, let's take a look at the packaging here. Uh, on the back, we have, you know, the Jurassic World logo, Dino Trackers, and then the other four you can get in the set. Tupendactylus, Zoanosaurus. I think that's how you pronounce it, right? Uh, Nothosaurus and Pianitskisaurus. And down here you can see the uh, scan to unlock and then the Tupendactylus. And, uh... Judging by the caress, this is a Tupendactylus Imperator, uh, not the other species, which I cannot remember the name, because um, they have different crests. You can tell. It's pretty easy to tell. This is the more popular one. Uh, you see a lot. I, I really think this one with the color scheme of the one from Jurassic World Alive would look really cool. I might get another one and repaint it. Probably not, because I said I was going to do that with the Ostroraptor, but I never got another Ostroraptor because I never saw another one. But yeah, we've got, it's the, uh, the desert biome, and <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and get it out because I'm so excited. This figure is just so cool. I just, I, I don't know if I've really ever been, I don't know how, like, I've not been this excited for a danger pack figure. Uh, wait a minute danger pack. I thought they were like, called it ferocious packs or something. I swear the danger pack, like, like, wait, wait, let me see something. Oh, okay, so for some reason I thought that like the, the Zuni Ceratops, like, um, like the line after the attack packs, but before Dominion, I thought that was called danger pack, but it's actually called wild packs. I get those mi mixed up like all the time, but, um, yeah, I'm just, just trying to figure something out. But basically, yeah, we've got our Tupendactylus out. So here is our Tupendactylus. Um, and this is a pretty nice figure. I think this is like, 
they don't, Mattel doesn't really release very many, um, smaller scale, uh, pterosaurs very often. I think the last one was the Sungaripterus. I might be wrong, but, uh, and that one, it was okay, but it's really not my favorite pterosaur. Uh, but this one actually looks really nice. Like, the sculpt and everything. I can get a closer look at this. So, like, as you can see up in the face, uh... As you can see, it's like kind of this brownish color, and around the beak here, you have the this like dark grayish brown up in the uh, beak area, and up here, you've got this spot with like kind of a maroon color, uh, and around the eye, you have that same color, but it's slightly darker, and around the crest here, the big, really nice crest, you've got that same grayish brown. And it goes up and like the whole crest is that color and then you have this red color that is kind of speckled all over the crest here it looks really nice um it would have been cooler to see like maybe some like of this maroon kind of like spotted or like have stripes up there very like flashy crest um and you can see the eye um is on there pretty nice um it looks okay I always do have to complain about, like, the printed-on look of this. It just, it, it never turns out looking really good. Like, like you can always tell that it's printed and it just looks really bad sometimes. Like, sometimes, uh, like, the Ostroraptor, it had, like, a greenish to it and it just looked really bad. Uh, let's take a look inside the mouth. Uh, as you can see, the teeth are painted. The two pendactyls doesn't even have teeth. Now that I think about it, because, like, Mattel has been known to give pterosaurs that don't have teeth, teeth. Like, look, they did that the, uh, pteranodons, all the pteranodons have teeth, which their name quite literally means wingless to- uh, <laughs> Toothless wing, not wing- <laughs> What am I talking about? <laughs> yeah, I I'm- I'm done. I'm done. Uh- so yeah, I'm not 100% sure about that. <laughs> do Tupendactyluses have teeth or not? I don't think they do. I don't remember them having teeth. But actually, let me just go look that up right now. Oh, they don't. It's completely wrong. Why does Mattel do this? They give everything teeth. Not everything has teeth. But anyways, yeah. So that's the color of the face. The teeth are painted quite nicely, even though they shouldn't even exist for uh, the first case. It should not even exist. Um, the tongue, it's not really textured, but as you can see, it's colored this pinkish color. And, yeah, that's pretty much it. The top of the mouth isn't painted, which is pretty much, like, all of these smaller scale figures. And then here on the wings, you can see it's like this, uh, sort of a tan color, like a really light tannish color. Um, yeah, oh. And it goes like all the way out and then as you can see it's that same brownish gray speckled everywhere and i think that looks really nice uh, makes it look really cool and then the rest of the body is like that um brownish color and as you can see it's very nicely textured uh we've got some wrinkles and folds up into the crest and uh very nice uh like um, wrinkles and scales along the neck. Um, like I said, the tongue isn't really textured. The teeth, again, they shouldn't even be there, but they're not the best looking teeth in the first place. Um, the beak has some nice texture to it, and it is very shrink-wrapped, uh, around its face. Um, but that's just basically, like, Jurassic World, to be honest. They all look like that. And then along these wings here, like you've got some wing texture and like the arms textured out here. And then there's like these weird bumps. Like what are those? I was looking at Tapajara, or not Tapajara, Tupendactylus skeletons. And like they've got sort of like bones like to attach the membranes to. But they're not like, this is like a nub. Like it looks like a growth. Like what in the world? And then there's this thing down here, which I, I can, I can, uh, give them a pass on that. Because it's just kind of a little place there. But, like, this, this really bothers me. Uh, the hands, they're definitely not as big as the, uh, Sungaripterus, which I really did not like that they made the Sungaripterus' 
hands look very giant, but this one looks pretty nice. Uh, and then the wing, uh, the finger goes down here, and uh, it kind of curves. It's got this curve here, which is kind of cool. I like the the extra pose instead of just being kind of flat like a lot of the pteranodons are, and like the um like the larger scale um pterosaurs are um and then on the back you've got these like i don't know what do you call them like they're not osteoderms it looks like it's it's like it's super skinny and it's like uh, it it looks it, i don't know are those like spikes what are they supposed to be because it looks like its backbone is showing through its skin like it's super skinny but then like the rest of its body it doesn't show I don't know what that's supposed to be. Uh, and then you got the feet and, you know, they've got scales and things, texture on it. Um, that's pretty much it. Uh, here's the scan code for you guys to scan in. There you go. Uh, it, this scan thing is actually kind of cool because, like, it stays open very nice. Like, uh, on the... Quetzalcoatlus and the uh, Sun Grifterus. They had like these trap doors here. They had, like I couldn't like I had to hold it up and then scan it. Like it took me a really hard time because it just kept wanting to close. But this one actually like clicks in and is pretty nice. Um, yeah, articulation wise on this figure, you have the jaw here that opens and close. Very nice, very smooth. It doesn't close all the way though. Uh, the neck here can be moved up and down and rotated all the way around, so you can get some really nice poses with that. Uh, the wings, they can move, like, up and down, and they can rotate. Um, and then they had the, uh, legs, which I, I never understood exactly. Like, why, why make both legs, like, move like the same like why not move them separately because i i know like for some of them i like the dimorphodon okay i get because like it's really skinny here and it might be like a little bit hard to make separate joints but this one this one you could for sure do that they're just <laughs> trying to make it look like it, it looks way like it looks cheap and like i don't know like all the pterosaurs the only ones that have, like, separate, like, separate joints are, like, what, the Tapajara, and the Tapajara doesn't even really have that much of leg joints, and, well, let me think, there's another one. And there's the two Quetzalcoatluses, but those are kind of, like, bigger scale figures, so I'm not really counting them, but I thought there was another smaller one that had, but, like, why don't they do that? Like, what's the point? Um, but yeah, uh, there's our, that's our Tubendactylus. Um, that's pretty much it. I guess we could do a size comparison. So for a size comparison, here we have the Dominion Sungaripterus, which <laughs> I really don't really like this figure. Like, it was pretty cool, but like, its wings look <laughs> like really weird. Um, as you can see, it's about the same size. The wings are a little bit uh, wider on this figure than it is on the Sungaripterus, and like I was saying, those hands <laughs> look way better on the Tupendactylus. Um, so yeah, they're about the same size, uh, for the, the figures. And then we have the Tapajara, uh, and again, they're actually very close in size. Um, actually, actually the Tapajara is a little bit smaller than the Tupendactylus. Um, because the Tapajara was always kind of one of my favorite smaller scale, um, like, um, pterosaurs. Because, like, you've got all this articulation on it and everything. And also the paint scheme looks awesome. Um, but yeah, they're a little, the Tapajara is a little bit smaller than the Tupendactylus. Its head is way smaller. Even though the Tapajara has quite a crest going on, the the uh, the Tupendactylus uh, has a very, very large head crest. Uh, and then we have a larger scale. We have a, just a basic Pteranodon. Everyone has a Pteranodon. Well, if you don't have a Pteranodon, what are you doing? You have to have a Pteranodon. And as you can see, it's very much smaller than the, the Pteranodon. Um, as you can see there. The wingspan on this Pteranodon is very giant. 
if it will unfold. Um, yeah. So that's basically the two pendactylus. Um, that, that's kind of all I have to say. I really like this figure. Uh, it would be cool to see, like, a repaint of this figure. Like, if they would re-release it and look like a different paint scheme. Because I do really like the sculpt. Like, the sculpt is really nice on this figure. The only things I really have to complain about are this weird nub here. And, uh, the, yeah, the teeth. The teeth that shouldn't be there. <laughs> but yeah, guys, that is the two pendactylus. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Click the subscribe button down below, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye!